Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel of the finals. Today we dive in another episode of the highly anticipated season 3 featuring this stunning Japan theme Kyoto map and the exciting new World Tour mode. Season 3 also brings a balance to weapons and gadgets. In this video we'll provide a detailed review of all key changes. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and let's dive into everything you need to know that might affect your game. Let's start with the light class that received the most of the buffs and definitely a winner this season. Firstly, health recovery is now faster, starting after only 7 seconds compared to 10 seconds before. Bridge charges have increased from 1 to 2, but the cooldown time has been extended from 15 seconds to 26 seconds. Additionally, their damage has been reduced from 200 points to 80 only, meaning you cannot longer kill enemy with a single charge unless you manage to attach two charges to a light class enemy. The stun gun now blocks all specializations and you cannot use them under its effect. The specialization is supposed to be also blocked if you hit by a goo grenade or goo gun, but for some reason it's not working right now. The sonar grenade has a larger radius from 15 meters back from 10. The amount of smoke grenades has been increased from 2 to 3 and increased time from 45 seconds to 50 for the cooldown. The 93R has become the easier to use with almost no recoil, making it more precise. It now has a longer effective range, but deals less damage at longer range. The V9S has an increased damage from 36 to 37 points, but this change doesn't affect any number of bullets required to kill, except for the heavy class, which now requires one less headshot bullet, and this change is negligible. SH-1900 shotgun has increased damage per pellet from 10 to 15, but widespread. This buff allows to kill heavy in two shots only, but you need to be closer than before. Strike Knife's change decreased the projectile speed for primary attack, but increased for the secondary attack, turning down its overall effectiveness. The LH-1 is the bigger winner, because its animation has been improved, making the gun easier to use. Its rate of fire has dropped from 300 to, to 80, but the damage has been increased from 49 to 52. This means that each class now requires one less shot to kill with this weapon. The number of headshots required now one less for each class compared to the body shots. The light class changes are the most impactful according to the page notes. The medium class now recovers health faster, starting after only 9 seconds compared to 10 seconds before. This change is less noticeable compared to the 3 seconds difference for the light class. The Guardian turret now has a cooldown where it's destroyed when you pick it up. The cooldown is shorter if you pick it up closer and longer if it's the range. You can now deactivate it remotely. The data resharper has been updated to have two charges, but the cooldown has increased from 15 seconds to 26 seconds. The glitch trap has been completely reworked. It no longer detonates, but instead functions as a line of sight trap, applying a glitch and prevents specialization only at the range and the direct side of the trap. So if you want to avoid it, just step away. The CL40 damage has dropped from 110 to 93, but its fire rate has increased from 250 to 275. It also costs less self-damage. However, this change is negligible as it doesn't affect the number of shots required to kill each class. The FAMAS has been improved, becoming more precise, like a laser tag. Its damage has been increased from 23 to 24, but this increased damage only affects the heavy class, which can now be destroyed with 5 bursts body shots compared to 6 before. The heavy class Gugan is supposed to block movement specialization for the light class, but it's currently not working as intended. The winch claw range has been reduced from 20 meters in the preview to 70 meters in the release. The motion sensor has been reworked and require a line of sight with the enemy to track them. If the line of sight is broken, the tracking stops. The Lewis gun has an updated firing pattern for better control with the first few bullets, but worse when shooting for extended periods. Its damage has decreased from 25 to 22 per bullet, resulting in more bullets requiring to kill each class. The M60 has a different pattern from the Lewis gun. Its pattern is now harder to control for the first few bullets, but becomes more accurate over time. Its damage has decreased from 22 to 19 per bullet, also requiring more bullets to kill each class. 
There are some general changes. Mostly grenades have been improved. The gas grenade now has a slightly larger radius of 5 meters, up from 4 and 5 meters. The goo grenade creates a wall of 6 blocks instead of 4, and if you get hit by it, you cannot evade or use a grappling hook, but it's not working either. The goo barrel now creates a wall of 4 blocks instead, and of 6. The glitch barrel range has been reduced from 6 meters to 3.5. The toxic barrel radius has also been reduced from 5 meters to 3.5 meters. In summary, the light class appears to be the winner with the faster health recovery and the LH1 buff requiring one less bullet to kill each class. Weapon changes for other classes mainly affected the FAMAS, which now needs one less burst to kill the heavy class, while all heavy weapons have been nerfed, requiring more bullets to kill anyone. And that's it for today. Based on these changes, it seems like it's the season for the light class to dominate. Let me know in the comments your thoughts and experience with these changes related to weapons. And until next time, see you in the arena, bye!